What a good morning to play with my junk. <laughs> if you guys saw the uh, DC, uh, the DC deal I did, the black market deal. Let me fix this. I'm trying to fix this camera angle. Let's see who's awake. It's 9 a.m. in DC, which means it is early on the West Coast. Let's see who we get. So if you guys saw the video yesterday, um, or that I posted last night, the the back alley deal, I'm going to show you guys what I got. Good morning to David. Good morning, my friend. I'm going to show you guys my take. Uh, and if you didn't see the video I posted last night, it shows you the black market back alley deal I did to get all this constitutional silver. So I got a ton of silver. I think it was like $254 face, something like this. So let me take out a bunch of this and let's see what we're working with. Who's in the chat? We got David, we have someone else that's awake. Man, look at all these. Once I get these out of the bag, I'll show you a few samples. So these are all walking liberties or what people for short call walkers. Sweet action. I just had breakfast. I almost did a breakfast stream, but I was like, uh, there's music playing people around, so I didn't do it. All right, so let's see what we got going on here. Bunch of walking liberties. Um, Agenda 69. Some guy from Scotland. Well, welcome, my friend. So this is a walking liberty, 90%. Okay. And you're going to be able to get to see some different samples of constitutional or junk silver. Here's a bunch more walkers. Silver Wolverine. What's up? So for the, those of you who are just joining, if you saw my back alley deal I posted last night, this is the actual silver from that deal. Uh, you didn't really get to see it too well in the video just because we were in kind of a, you know, a public place. Yes, yes, yes. So I think <clears throat> it's like $120 face of the Walking Liberties. And where are you guys all from? I know we have someone from Scotland in the chat. What, what states or countries is everyone else from? Okay. Woo. So the 50 cent piece or half dollar that came after um, that came after the Walker was the Franklin. So I got a handful of Franklins, not a lot. I don't know, maybe $20 worth. <laughs> he tries to add a back alley, that's funny. So this is what the Franklin looks like. That's like the Liberty Bell in the back of the crack. Now the Franklin was supposed to be in circulation for a lot longer than it was, but then when President Kennedy was shot, they made fire Cajun in the house, what's up? They made the Kennedy. So I already purchased all his 90 percenters previously. Some of the slow stacker unboxings you've seen. But um, I got a ton of 40 percenters off them. Now you guys know I don't like 40 percenters, but I've got a, a plan to flip these. You know, I got a really good deal on this stuff. I, bought, I got all the silver you see here at spot, guys. All the silver you see here I got at spot. At spot price, are you kidding me? I could flip it on eBay and make, you know, way more than that right now if I wanted to. Okay. So these are the Kennedys. Okay, so Walking Liberties, Franklin's Kennedys. We got a ton of quarters. I don't even know if I'm going to take these out. Look at all these quarters, and some of these quarters are just in the craziest condition ever. For instance... Let me find one. 
I mean, that's good condition, but some of these are just an absolutely ridiculous condition. Let me see if I can find one for you guys. Let me... Oh, here... No. I mean, they're all in really good shape, but, I mean, there's, like, some masterpieces. Like, I mean, that's really good shape, but there's ones even better than this. Look at this shape. Look at the shape. So, you guys, there's deals out there to be had, and there's some really good deals if you can buy some private collections, but it also comes with risk, you know. You want to make sure you're in a, a nice area, you're not going to get robbed, you can trust. Um, that way you don't have to trust the seller as much. You got to make sure it's legit and have a way to test it, which I do. Um, so that's all the quarters. <laughs> so, I mean... I'm sure you guys played arcade games back in the day. You could do the math on that. That's a lot. And then... Got some Roosevelt's. I think this is like $8 face of Ro Roosevelt Dimes. Or Rosie's. And then we have more 50 cent piece Kennedy 40 percenters. And actually... There should be... There's a speck of gold here somewhere, but don't tell me I already freaking lost it. Oh, there it is. One second. Look, guys, this is why you got to be careful. The speck of gold I had left in this freaking pack. I could have thrown that away. Are you kidding me? So I got this little piece of gold from him, too, which you saw in the video. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. There it is. I just bought them. I can't put them in tubes yet. I literally just bought them. And I got to get them back to California. Let's see if I can get this to focus on this piece of gold. Come on. There we go. It's a little piece of gold. I don't know. I'm going to have to go home and weigh it. A gram, maybe. If that. I guess we could dump the quarters out of this bag. Will that make you feel better? Or will that make you feel worse? I mean, just look at the shape of some of these. I mean, look at these, guys. Some of these are, like, basically uncirculated. It is a tiny speck of gold. It might even be a... It might even be a half of a gram. Oh, my gosh. I'm doing this for you, and now you're saying it's worse. Now I'm dropping quarters all over. Someone's going to find a quarter. Oh, look at this one. Wow. Wow. Gosh. Look at this one. Look at this one. There's some freaking beauties in this. And look, this one's like a little bit toned, but even it, it's, that's a 1941. Look at the condition that's in. You guys, there's some proofs and, yeah, I agree with you, Fire Cage, and those are proofs. Let's see if there's any more proofs in here. Let's pull the proofs. Yeah, look, right here. Wow. I've never bought constitutional silver at spot price in that condition. Are you kidding me? Like this one's worn, but it's in decent shape. 1935. So crazy. Tell me if you guys see a proof. I mean, that's not quite, but I mean, it's up there. Yeah, this is a good score. I agree. I mean, even the non proof ones. Totally not a proof, but look at the condition of that. Okay, I gotta sit down. Ugh. All right. Are there any more proofs? Hey, Sandy. 
Um, I posted a video last night of a back alley silver deal. And here in DC, I met up with a YouTuber, so you can go check that video out of me buying this stuff, but we didn't get to see the silver close because I bought it in public. Wow, look at these specimens. Look at these guys. Those are proof. Wouldn't you guys say those are proof? If you think these are proofs, hit one. I don't know, Alex. You know me, I'm kind of a silver dragon. I don't sell my silver unless I'm flipping it. I gotta hoard my silver. But I probably will give some away in a gone planning. I'm gonna do a little a, a giveaway soon when I get to San Diego. And I fly to San Diego today, by the way. Uh, so once I get back there and go through some boxes, I'm gonna do a, a baby gaw. Just for fun. It was super fun, Sandy. The middle one has cameo. What is cameo? I've always heard people say cameo, but I never knew what it was because I'm not into numismatic. What, is cam what does cameo mean? You'll buy it from me for more than I paid? I don't know. Let me think about it, Alex. You can send me an email, internationalstacker at gmail.com. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> I'm a, I'm definitely a silver dragon. I think one of these looked pretty good. Okay, let's look at these Benjis. Frosting light compared to the shiny. Oh. I mean, look at these Benjis, guys. These are in great shape. I mean... I think there's a decent one in here. Let's see. Yeah, look, look at the condition of these. That's almost uncirculated. Look at that. And you know, even the ones like this, they get that cool patina, are super cool. So anyways, guys, looks like I made a freaking phenomenal deal on this. And thank you to Clueless Homesteaders for hooking me up with this collection. I believe, I have to check, but I believe this is about $240 face. Oh, the silver. Who here used to play with quarters in an arcade? Those are such great times. Like, man, look at this. It's not like the others, but I mean, it's, it's damn near uncirculated. They're everywhere. Damn near uncirculated. And we have only one bat in the bunch, but I'm cool with that. <laughs> Kennedys and a bunch of walkers. Let's look at some of these walkers. These walkers are in decent shape. I mean, you can see the dates. This looks like the worst one. You can still see the date though, 1917, is that? Street Fighter, Fighter more Combat, yep. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to show you it. Show you the silver from the Back Alley DC deal. And again, we had the dimes as well, and another bag of 40 percenters. Do you like my junk? <laughs> Thanks, Silver Madness. <laughs> hey, Doctor Who. Playing with my junk in the morning. Who else plays? Who else plays with their junk in the morning? <laughs> Nice, yeah, go to the LCS while you're there. You never know what you'll find. 
I saw Alex, I got it. And you know what else, guys? I went to the LCS here in DC um, yesterday, and here's my trick. Now you guys know I don't pour silver yet, but I'm definitely a thousand percent gonna do it when I move back to the United States. But it has to be when I move back, so I need to have a, a place to do it and all this. But one of my best ways I get deals in LCSs is, is I go in there and I say, hey, you know, I'm just looking for messed up junk silver or dented silver. I'm just gonna melt it down and pour it. I do, I, I pour my own bars. And when you say that, automatically the store owners know, okay, I'm not gonna get him to buy a high premium pre piece. This guy's in it for cheap silver, okay? So when I did that here in DC, I got all these silver, all these here at, at Melt, which for those of you who don't know, Melt is actually better than Spot. All this at Melt price. So just an example, and this is about, this is about 30 ounces of random silver. So for instance, in this, these are all 50% silver. We got a crown, I got a spot, melt, we got a peso, we got a florin. Like all this silver you see here, I got a spelt, spot or melt. And if you remember guys, when I went to the UK, the silver was super expensive. So that's an example of the 50% silver. Um, I got some, I got in here some Venezuelan Bolivian coins. Here's a bunch of Canadian quarters and things. I got all this at freaking spot. Are you kidding me? Except for these. Oh wait, no. Yeah. Except for these. I bought these for $1 over spot, which is a little bit expensive for a silver round, but they're the U S assay office. And I did it to, you know, build relations with them. So I got four of those, but also look at these. What are these? These are Portugal. So these are Portuguese silver. It's kind of sad, guys, looking back at all the countries that used to have like legit silver coins and no more. What's this? This is public of, I don't even know what this is. Asterish. I don't know what country that is. Does anyone know? Oh, Netherlands, that's Netherlands. So there's some Netherlands silver in there. Isn't this phenomenal? Silver Limey didn't know what junk in the trunk meant. That's funny. Gotta wake up the spinning man. That's funny. Yes, we gotta keep hoarding. Ah, Austria. Okay, guys, this is 30% silver coins. I got all this at melt. And I mean, some of the coins are beat up, but some are in really good shape. Look at this one. This is... I'm not even sure what this is, but it's something. Look at all this. Something with the crown. Does anyone speak that language? Oh, it's Sweden. Okay. So that's Swedish silver. So I got a ton of that. Um, here's some 80%. Oh, that's Canadian. Are you sure it's not silver? I was told it was silver. So these are Swedish. So you're saying this is a Swedish crown? Supposedly it's 30% silver. So maybe, maybe certain years were 30% silver. I don't know, this guy's an old man, super trustworthy. So if it's not silver, it's an honest mistake you made, but I'm sure it is. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, we got one of these. Yeah, I mean, all this coinage back in the day was silver before, like, the whole world went off of it. So this is a really beat-up Mexican peso. That's interesting. 
I mean, guys, some of these coins, I was looking at the dates, and they are like um, 1912, 18 something. So these are 10% silver, and these are old Mexican pesos. These are 10% silver. There's some Bolivian coins in here I wanted to show you guys, but I'm not sure which pouch they're in. Let's check this one. So what are these? I have no clue what this stuff is. These are really worn. I'm trying to find one that's not that worn. Oh, Canada? So these are all Canadian coins. I wanted to, I've got some Venezuelan Boulevard I wanted to show you guys, but I don't know. Oh, here it is. Oh, wait, no, this is uh, Balboa. Look at this. Panama, 1961. How cool is this stuff, guys? And he did, he did all this by the weight, and I got it at Melt. So, you guys, this goes to show you, if you look hard, in one city I was able to find coins from all over the world at Melt Silver and U.S. Constitutional Silver at Melt. So, you know, this is taught me something in my stacking life guys about patience and about really searching out the best deals uh, before you pull the trigger and it pays dividends and you're going to end up acquiring so much more than if you had uh you know just bought the first thing you saw oh well, look at this what is that no clue what this is. Oh, Deutschland. This looks German. Dang. It's crazy. Make a pipe out of the one. Someone tried to make a pipe. I know. Did you see that one coin had like a bowl in it? Uh, cigar box nice man I can't read that some of these are really worn and like usually I just mix my silver together but these are all separated by their percentages so I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna mix them or keep them like this I kind of don't like having a million packages Centavos, is this Mexican? Republic of the Colombia, 1953. Guys, how sad is it that all these countries used to have silver coinage and now nothing? So Colombia, so Colombia, that's 30% silver. Let's see what this is. Only one, a few coins in here. Oh, this is some super Warren coin, 1917. No clue what it is, but that almost looks like Arabic on there. And then this looks like a little Canadian, is it? No. What is this? No clue. Too small. Ugh. Washington cars is the best deal. You know, people base it off different things. People base it off silver loss a lot with constitutional silver. And if you guys <laughs> check for coca residue on the Colombian, that's funny. If you guys saw, I put out that one video weighing all my constitutional silver to see which is the best. Look at this. What is that date? 1900. 
1900, guys. What do I know about Arabic, please? I hope you're joking, but for those of you who don't know, I'm a contractor in the Middle East. I've been there for years. So what do you guys like better? Do you guys like better? And look, this is silver I gave away yesterday. When I showed this off the first time, I, gave, I did a flash go and gave away like five coins. Um, and actually, one of our giveaway yesterday was the Boulevard I wanted to show you. I found it really interesting that I got some um, Venezuelan Boulevards. How interesting is that? And the sad thing right now in Venezuela is if anyone there had silver, they could be feeding their freaking family for, here it is. They could be feeding their family for weeks, months, days, anything. So this is a Venezuelan Boulevard. I got a bag in here with several. I gave this one away yesterday during a, a live stream flash go. Look at that, 1935. Venezuela had silver in their money. Now, now in Venezuela, they are literally weighing paper currency to pay for things. They're weighing the currency to pay for the things. If that doesn't show people how important gold and silver is, <clears throat> I don't know what will. So if you like the foreign constitutional silver best, <clears throat> hit one. And if you like the U.S. real constitutional silver, hit two. And I call it all constitutional silver, silver based off our constitution, not other people's constitutions. And look, this is from that buy yesterday, guys. The video I put out yesterday, the back alley uh, black market deal here in D.C. And look at the condition of some of these. I mean, I think some of these are freaking proofs. Look at these. And for those of you who just joined, these are all the quarters I got yesterday. Kennedy, 40 percenters, Walking Liberties, Franklin, and a little piece of gold. Also, we have some dimes and some more Kennedys, 40 percenters. Looks like most people like the twos. Nice. Big T, welcome. Jillian, welcome. Silver Load, welcome. Trevor. You wonder if all the embassies in D.C. helped with a variety of international coins. Embassies. I don't know, maybe. Oh, you get it for one dollar a piece. That's nice. Um, I don't buy constitutional at twelve uh per face. I usually will pull the trigger if it's like ten and a half times. That's what I shoot for. So it looks like most people like the constitutional. Okay, so all the quarters are 90 percenters because they're 64 and before. The, all the walkers are 90 percenter. <clears throat> the um, Franklins are 90 percenter. All these Kennedys are all 40 percenters. They're all 1965 to 1970. Um, he had no more 90 percenters left. I bought those out previously. And then, of course, the dimes. I got probably seven, eight dollars face dimes, and they're all Roosevelt 90 percenters. Yeah, it's all 90%. And then those, this is all that foreign stuff I was just showing you guys. It varies. There's 90, 925, 83, there's 50 in there. I even got some 10 percenters. No fair Troy ounces here. That's funny. It's a use silver, have respect for your elders. That's funny. Nice, Brain Dead's playing with his junk over there in New York. You know what's funny, World Stacker? I used to have zero constitutional silver. And then on one of my first full stack videos, I always ask for advice. And someone said to get some, and since then I've gone crazy. Um, I would say that constitutional silver now is probably, I'll see when I get home, but probably 20% of my stack is now, or 25% of my stack is constitutional silver, I think. Yeah, I do have certain goals. Let me bring up my uh, spreadsheet here and I'll show you. I like to share my strategy and stuff with you guys, my triumphs, my failures, so then that way hopefully it helps you out. So, let me make sure I'm not gonna dox myself real quick, okay. So this is my spreadsheet that I keep track of all my buys. 
So what it does is it tells me the total ounces. So right now I have 4,411 ounces of silver, 2.47 ounces of gold. It tells me my average spot for silver, my average spot for gold. It tells me the fiat I invested for gold and the fiat I invested for silver so far. And then down here I have my average cost per ounce of silver is 1849. My average cost of ounce of gold is 1203, which this is pretty good guys because I started stacking when it was like 20 bucks almost. Um, and then here, this is the weight. This is the total weight of the silver for when I make my weight videos. And then on this side, I can see here, this is how much silver I've stacked this year so far. So since January 1st, I've done 812 ounces. You can see up here, last year I did 2,100 ounces. The year before that, I did 1,000. And the year before that, which was my first year ever, was 406. Uh, if you saw my video on my constitutional silver, this is a study I did on constitutional silver and the amount of silver lost. That's a really interesting video if you haven't seen it. Um, but my goal for this year is here, uh, 5,000 ounces. I might as well just write it. So my goal is 5,000 ounces of silver. And it's 10 ounces of gold. So I am about, did I write something? Okay, I thought I changed something. So I am about <clears throat> six, 500 and... 89 ounces from the silver and I'm pretty far off from the gold. So once I hit this I'm stacking a ton of silver right now. I'll probably switch focus to the gold. So that's my plan my goals for 2019 Do you guys think I can hit those goals if I can hit those goals? Put a one if you think maybe hit a two if you think I'm dreaming hit a three. Let's see what you guys think World stacker I'm just not a numismatic guy. I'm stacking for the weight you know, maybe eventually I'll get into Numis, but as of right now, nah. Nice, Trevor. That's good. Yep, I agree with you. Okay, Stacking thinks I can do it. Yeah, so if you see here... Um, Doctor Who, this is that buy I just made. So the, so what you just saw is $10.50 of Benji's, $7.70 of Roosevelt Dimes, $120 worth of Walkers, and 116 Jefferson Quarters. So when I calculate this, so the total ounces for that buy yesterday was 181, which is based on 90% silver, but I also take in the silver loss. So when I calculate my con constitutional silver, I calculate it by, by 715 which not only takes in the account uh, for silver of 90%, but it also takes in silver loss as well on the, on the circulated stuff. I'll think about it, World Stacker, but right now I'm going for the weight. Someone asked me what my next goal is going to be after I hit 5,000. I don't know. Should I keep going? Do I switch only to gold? Or do I try to be, do I try to stack an actual metric ton of silver? That would be freaking crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty happy with this number, guys. I've really decreased, I've decreased this by $1.50 over the last, since the start of the year, just with all the low silver spot price. So I'm really trying to get this down more, but when you're dealing with 4,000 ounces, it's hard. Like this $2,700 buy only dropped it by like three cents. But I really want to get into the 17s before this spot price turns. Yeah, so here's the constitutional, guys. Picked up and this. And guess what? Some of this stuff you guys are going to be able to win. Because as soon as I get home, I am going to do uh, a little baby gaw. Because believe it or not, one of the prizes, the big prizes from the mega gaw was never claimed. So I'm going to gaw that off again and then throw in some of these little coins. Thanks, Alex. What's up, Josh? Doctor Who saying in the end, silver is silver no matter what. So Doctor Who's got a point. So if you're a stacker that is stacking for like the collapse and you think silver is going to go out of control, at that point, the numismatic value wouldn't matter. 
But when would the numismatic value matter? One, if that never happened, or two, like back when the U.S. gold confiscation happened in the in the past with the, in the U.S., the way around it to keep your gold was to have a numismatic coin. So there's an argument for stacking numismatic uh, coins because then the government wouldn't take it. Because usually if they do a gold or silver confiscation, it'll only be for bullion. So there's arguments for that. But I mean, how would they even know? There's arguments for both sides. It just depends what your viewpoints are, you know? So maybe World Stacker in the future, maybe I'll get a few numies just to diversify it a little bit. But for right now, I'm focused on weight. And see, koalas, I don't consider numismatic. I consider those semi-numismatic. Three here. Silver load thinks I can't do it. When do you think spot is going to stop dropping? You know what, Trevor? I'm not sure, but I don't want it to. I want spot to stay as low as possible because I believe it's going to go up substantially in the future, like a lot of people do. So the longer it's the lower, the longer it's low for, the more we're going to benefit off of it. So every time I see that spot price going low, I don't get upset. I get happy because I'm in it for the long term, which metals should be a long term play. So in the end, I know I'm going to make out on it. So that makes me happy. You get mostly 90%. Yeah, Josh, I really don't like 40 percenters. So I bought these in the mind that I'm going to flip them at my uh, coin shop. And I think what I might try to do is trade them for a bar or something. So we both get more like he gets these and can make more selling them off individually. And then I'll get the bar for cheaper than I would have. So 40 percenters, I just barter them or sell them. Yeah, stacking silver, there's been a lot of advertisements for sure on PMs on the radio and stuff and TV. I've seen them. Nice. Josh has $1,000 face or 90%. That's totally respectable. Good job. <clears throat> silver low stays away from you as Maddie. Buy when it's low. Good point, Josh. Oh, silver load retracted it. He thinks I'll hit it. Thank you. Must have been playing with me. We are young, Josh. But that's why it's so great that we're in it now. Who knows? Maybe we'll be the next Hunt Brothers. See, Alex coin roll hunting. His cost is 1202. Woo! You hate 40% also. Nice. Good, Josh. I like that. Agree about the koalas. Your NGC slab. Nice. That's awesome, World Stacker. You know, to each his own, guys. You know, there's no perfect strategy out there. I know people that only only do bullion and and generic silver, and they they say, "Why are you getting this semi numismatic stuff and this other stuff?" And I know people the opposite. I think the main thing is that there's no strategy that's going to work perfectly. I doubt it. So I think diversification is a good thing and seeing what other people's points of views are. But just keep it in mind, the only person you're stacking for is yourself. So forget the haters and stack that silver to the sky. That's kind of what I think. Alex, good point. You can get them at melt or below melt. Or guess what, guys? I get a lot of my 40% silver for free. Well, actually for 50 cents. How would I do that? Coin roll hunting, which is in Alex's name, so I'm sure he's gotten a lot that way as well. Wow, Josh's cost is 13.52. That's phenomenal. Yeah, and World Stacker's got a point. There is a lot of like numismatic action right now with these semi numi coins. And like anything that comes out by Scottsdale Mint or something, I'm buying like five or 10 uh, of the coins. And I flipped a lot of coins, guys. So sometimes I will buy numismatic or semi-numismatic coins with the intent on flipping them and growing my base stack of silver for free. So I do do that a lot. If you remember my palladium flip video, guys, I bought the palladium proof coin, flipped it, made $1,000, put it back all into silver and gold. That's how you stack for free. Mellow stacker in the house. Yeah, Josh said he started generic, then went ASCs and Maples. Now he's hooked on 90%. Yeah, that seems to happen. Base stack is junk silver. Nice. You guys, I've come to the conclusion that there should be two bases to, to a strong stack. 
Um, so I've started to focus on that more. I think constitutional is a good base. And I think American Silver Eagles are a good base. The reason I think American Silver Eagles are a good base is they hold their premium. You sell them, you're still going to get a premium. You're going to get paid above spot. And they're the most recognizable silver uh, bullion coin. And then constitutional silver I like because it's easy to sell. Sometimes you can get above spot or, or at, at spot at least, whereas generic you can get below spot. But um, it's super recognizable. And if you stack for SHTF, which I don't necessarily do, but it's a byproduct of, which I'll explain in a second, you have these to barter with and pay people with and stuff like that. And also these make good gifts and presents for people. And it's good fractional silver. Now, what do I mean about SHTF? Do I think it can happen? You guys, my job is emergency management, security, all this type of stuff. So yes, I believe it's possible. Do I think it's going to happen next week? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But here's how I stack that protects me for every type of situation. How I stack is for my retirement. Now, if I'm stacking for my retirement, that protects me against a couple of things. One, if SHTF does happen, I'm automatically protected because I have my retirement silver hoard. Two, if SHTF doesn't happen, I didn't put all my resources into something and now I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened? I still have it to retire on, so no problem. Um, three, if there's an economic collapse, but it doesn't like make a total like zombie apocalypse, I'm still protected because now I've preserved my buying power and it's fighting against inflation. Now, since I'm stacking for retirement, does it mean I won't sell this tomorrow? No, it doesn't. If silver went crazy and the market crashed, for instance, instance the housing market crash, you would see me sell probably 50% of my stack. I would turn it into fiat currency. Then I would go buy distressed properties for, for pennies on the dollars. Or if it was a really strong uh, company and the stock market went down, I might buy... Uh, some stocks in a strong company for 10 cents on the dollar for sure. I'm always looking for an opportunity to flip and make money. But for the long run, my main goal is to stack for retirement and automatically I'm protected for every single scenario out there. You like that? Yeah, Rob, SH, SHTF is an acronym people use for S word, S H I T, shit hits the fan. And that basically means like there's some big like societal breakdown, apocalypse, pandemic, disaster, whatever. And then you can have this stuff to barter with. So there's all, a whole contingent of people who stack for that. And they're also uh, called preppers. So like they'll get food preps and stuff like this. Now, I don't consider myself a hardcore prepper, but definitely my family guys has six months uh, worth of dry freeze food and water supply. Why? I work in the world of emergency management. Disaster management. I've been to disasters where people have been cut off from services for, for weeks. So even FEMA tells you you should have enough food and water to survive for at least 72 hours. So prepping does not only mean you think a zombie apocalypse is going to come and the entire world is going to collapse. It means maybe a hurricane comes, I'll be ready. Maybe an earthquake comes. So, you know, it's just like anything. You can take it to extremes or not. World Stacker scene is on. Bob, where you picked up three 100 trillion notes for five bucks, sold them for 100 bucks each. Oh, that's such a good idea, World Stacker. I want to find some of those trillion uh, dollar notes. I want to do a video on it. Thank you, Stacking Silver. The swans are doing the best, but the birds of paradise. Um, I bought five of the first birds of paradise. Um, I know the second one's coming out. I'm not sure what's going to happen. The swans, I was going to buy the second version of swans, but now Ant Mex charges sales tax, so I couldn't justify it, so I skipped them. Alabama in the house, Bama Silver. So see, Stacking Silver uses rental properties and rents to buy silver. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, look what happened in New Orleans, guys. People were literally freaking dying. So just having some food and water, like you don't have to go crazy and have like 30 years of food and water, but you know, I'd say just for normal people, I recommend for every citizen to have a uh, be able to be sufficient with food and water for a month. If you do that, you're very, you're very well protected for a lot of scenarios. Oh, Doctor Who has the billion and the trillion. I need to get some of those notes. I need to figure it out. Maybe I'll take a trip to Zimbabwe. If I can flip them, I don't even know if they have them in Zimbabwe anymore, but if they do, maybe I'll roll to Zimbabwe, buy like $1,000 worth of them and just flip them on eBay. Huh. Nice. Alex is going to get War Nickels on her spot. See, I'm not really into War Nickels either. I don't know what my problem is. I'm really not into 90%, but I just bought a bunch of sub 90% foreign coins. But I thought the foreign coins were cool. That's why I went for them. I don't know. 
Um, Josh, there was a law that was um, backed up by the Supreme Court. And then what ended up happening because of that is now these different places are like, oh, we have to do sales tax. So a lot of places are doing sales tax. Uh, Provident, I don't get sales tax yet. I don't know if I'm going to. But the trick is with a lot of these is there's a threshold. So I believe most places it's over $2,500. So if you place $2,500 or more, you won't get taxed. Um, so if that was the case, you just have to save up all your purchases, save up until you have $2,500, and then you would have to uh, place the order to skip the sales tax. That's what I would do. So if every store starts doing sales tax, I'll wait until I hit that threshold, then I'll make a purchase. Wow, they sell them all over Zimbabwe. I need to go to freaking Zimbabwe. Okay, so... Massachusetts is above a thousand. Nice. Wow, World Stacker has MS70, all the koalas. That's nice. Hey, World Stacker, did you get any of those new, um, the two ounce koalas, the mother and the baby? I got a bunch of those. If not, check those out. Tax is a huge premium. But you guys, you know how blessed or lucky we are in the United States? When I went to Europe, they have like a 20% or 18% VAT tax on silver and gold and all this stuff. So we're actually really lucky. They can't buy stuff at spot over there. Ah, silver load. That's a good point. War nickels would be good during a SHTF scenario. No, I do not have any World War II five pound notes. Oh, yeah, because you guys, the Germans during World War II counterfeited a ton of them. So it'd be kind of cool to find a counterfeit one, I guess. <laughs> okay, so it looks like California's $1,000, no tax. That's nice. Nice, World Stacker. World Stacker, are you a contractor like me? Is that why you're going to all these countries? Josh says he scooped five gen next generations from my video recommendation. Awesome. Good job. Um, I think those two ounce koalas are going to appreciate, not crazily, but I think you're going to be able to get 50 bucks a pot for them easily. That's nice, Alex. You don't get taxed. You know, if you've got a good relationship with your LCS guys and you pay cash, you can get away with not paying tax. Interesting, Doctor Who. Oh, World Stacker is a travel writer. That's great. So you probably go to a lot of unique places. And World Stacker, I heard there's a ton of silver, cool silver in the Philippines, and they're pesos. They're old pesos. Yeah, I'm sure there are tons of the notes in the lake silver load, and maybe some Nazi gold and silver as well. Uh, 143 Drew saying his war nickels aren't good for barter, that they're actually junk. You know, maybe I agree with you. I don't know. You know what I think is the key coin for barter? 90% dime. I think that's the key coin for bartering on small, small type things. Stacking is silver is having issues with storage. I have a video on storage. I have, what, 4,400 ounces, guys, and it fits in six monster boxes. Here's the keys. One, get a nice container to keep it in. Two, I don't do all these slabbed coins and coins with all these big boxes and certificates and all this stuff just for that. I, I don't want to have to store them. So get some of those, uh, get the 10-ounce RCM uh, bar, empty monster boxes. They're nice, and even if they're full, they're not crazy heavy, and you can put seven... Uh, one of them, I've got 700 ounces of poured silver, and you can do that. Family business tax number to pay, no tax on any. That's awesome, Doctor Who. Uh, Merkit. Yeah, Merkit. What's up, Tessa? Just numismatic stuff. Ooh, Japan. Ooh, Gorilla Notes. That sounds cool. I don't even know about those. I'm not into paper currency at all. If you guys could tell from my video I posted last night, I freaked out when I found one star note. <laughs> but I've never been in the U.S. Uh, well, I'm not in the U.S. that much, so I don't have the opportunity to look for that stuff. 
Cool, Doctor Who. Nice, Alex. Has 100 ounces of silver. His goal, or her goal, his or her. Are you him or her? I think he's a him. Is to get 150 by uh, the summer. Now, Alex, with 100 ounces of silver, you have more than 99.9% .9 of the world population. So you're doing well, my friend. Storage is an issue. You have hundreds of thousands of ounces. That's funny. China monster boxes are superior. Drew, the reason I went with the 10 ounce RCM one is because of weight. When you have those things full of silver, I couldn't have a much bigger box. So I like the smaller box because of the weight factor and they lock together. I'm an earthquake country. Yeah, I found, you guys, since that video, I found another freaking star note. Let me show you guys. I don't know what's going on. So, after I made that video, it's in between all my Saudi Arabian cash, I found another star note. Actually, I didn't find it technically. What happened is I was down at the bar in this hotel I'm at, and I, when I found it, I was excited, and I told the guy at the cashier, I'm like, hey, if you see one of these notes, save it for me. So the next time I saw him, he's like, hey, I got one of those notes, and I traded him 50s for it. And I gave him a little tip after I paid my bill. But now I got two of those star notes, 50s. Is that funny? Here's some Saudi Arabian coins, or cash. That's the new king. That's the old king. Crazy, huh? Yeah, I was thinking about trying to flip them on eBay or something. I don't know. I'll probably just hold on to them for a while and see what happens. Worst case scenario, I don't do anything with them and I have a little savings. <laughs> Oh, nice world stacker. Good point. Empty cigar box, yeah? What's my take on copper? You know, I think copper bullion and all that, it's... I mean, it's cool. But, I mean, it's like a stacking thing. I don't know, man. Unless copper went nuts, I don't know. I'd say probably the best thing to do is, like I'm sure other people are saying in chat, is you just keep the pennies. Um, I, bl I forget. Is it pre-1981 or pre-1982, they're copper? And the thought process is with that is once they take pennies out of circulation, because they will eventually because their money's inflating to hell, um, that you'll be able to melt them down and they'll, they're worth, you'll double your money. So that's the thought process on that. But am I a copper stacker? No. Would I buy a cool copper round if it was like a good deal? Sure. If I get like a deal where I get free copper, will I keep it? Sure, but I'm not actively buying it. Nice, Alex has 225. It's pre-1982, okay. So pre-1982 is copper pennies, guys. So that's the way to stack copper for a cent. Yeah, I'm starting to save my copper pennies too, but if you guys remember, I'm outside of the U.S. a ton, so I don't have much time to do it. Tillable, oh, tillable farmland is also a good storage of wealth. Yeah. 16 is 40 ounces. Wow, awesome, man. So Reed, guys, is 16. Reed, you are ahead of 99.9% .9 of the the world don't feel like you have to get to 100 ounces tomorrow just take your time stack consistently stay on target and keep it to yourself don't tell your friends don't tell anyone when you're in the stacker community you got to be anonymous yeah well it's for sure copper is going to be pricey it's, it's not easy to pour and you know so if you're buying copper bullion you're losing a lot you're paying a lot of premium
All right, guys, so I'm going to get going. Um, I'm going to fly here in a couple hours, so maybe I'll do a stream from one of the airports. I don't know. But I'm headed back to San Diego, which means I'm finally going to get to all my boxes that are waiting for me. So I'm going to unbox a bunch of orders. If you sent me channel mail, I'm going to be opening all my channel mail. Um, P.O. Box to me is in the link in the description below. And yeah, guys, I hope you had time. I had a great time hanging out with you. I hope you enjoyed um, hanging out with me and playing with my junk in the morning. But not only my American junk, my constant or my uh, international junk. I hope you guys had fun. And what do we say? How do we end this? How do we end this? See if anybody knows. Let's see if anyone knows the, the phrase. Nobody knows the phrase. <laughs>